Hey guys, this is DD aka Dark Frozen Depths back with another little pre event video for um Kamihime Project. Now, before I even get into that, gotta point out some things. There's uh been like a little bit of issues I found out with um Kamihime Project. They say they, they fixed them, but I honestly had a loading issue earlier today. I don't know if that's on their side or not. But yeah, that's the whole thing about it. That's why they give a compensation about that. And then on top of that too, I'm not even fully done with the Valentine's Day logins, but they also added an anniversary login, so you can get quite a lot of magic jewels right about now. I'd suggest you try to log in every day if you can. But anyways, there's also more storyline too, and it's looking quite impressive. I'm actually enjoying the storyline. I kind of wish they go past this point, but this is more like a point of point of um, no return for the storyline because of the fact that. I haven't noticed anything else past it on the um, wiki, and this is the Japanese wiki, mind you, so they're like a year ahead of us. So I don't know if they're going to give us any more storyline. If that's the case, then we're pretty much just stuck. But anyway, that's all I got for sad stuff, now getting on to the event itself. Speaking of Valentine's Day for the logins, we have a Valentine's event. And I'm not exactly sure which characters are going to give us, but I do know for a fact that we're going up against Amphis Baina. Which is hard to um, pronounce, I guess. It's completely spelled different in um, the wiki, which is translation, so yeah. But, this is a darkness-based one, so if you need darkness weapons, this is one for you. If not, it's not too focused on it, but from what I've noticed, we haven't gotten too many darkness events either, along with light, so... Maybe they'll start racking up, maybe they won't. I don't know. But that's a, another thing too. Darkness and light are elements to really try to focus on if you can build them because of the fact that they have no weaknesses technically. Because enemies will be weak against you, but you won't be weak against them. So, in fact, I think you take reduced damage if you use a light team versus a dark one or a dark team versus a light, light enemy. Kind of like that. But that's the whole recommendation for this one. Light team if you have it. Otherwise, use whoever, because you shouldn't have to worry about weaknesses. Anyways, this is also a raid event. A normal raid event. So, we're going to go after the, um, the Divine and the Devil Souls again. And I've seen a little bit of this page earlier. 200 Divine Souls, 100 Devil Souls. That should cover all that. You'll probably have enough participation points by then to get all the... Um, the participation point rewards, but they're the same as before. It seems like they just made it a static list of extra gacha tickets, so there's like a good 300 there for that. But me personally, I can easily rack up a thousand if I just focus on this event, and quite frankly, I have quite a bit of opportunity to do it this time around, so I shouldn't really be too down on the grinding. I'm just not going to be too focused on getting the SSR, if anything, so I'm more in it just to try to pull extra stuff. If anything, I'll aim for the weapon. I'll I'm not too focused on getting the eye doing. But, um, anyways, this event, you got some little storyline pieces in order to get some mag extra magic jewels. Then you got to summon the expert in the Ragnarok raids along with the standard one. So, and then I haven't said this before, but efficient way of grinding if you're trying to start your own raids is to pretty much spam a lot of standards. Then you can build up on experts, which will give you stuff for Ragnarok. And for some weird reason, you can also get stuff to go towards other things, too. Like, I know this expert gives you some more expert stuff to refund the cost, but also give you Ragnarok materials. I've noticed that one before, so... Yeah, that's the whole thing with that one. And you're, of course, going to need AP potions to start your own raids. Otherwise, worry about BP. And you'll, you'll more than likely have a lot of um, BP restore items, too. I keep saying that every time there's a raid event, but because it's a, it's a very valid thing. I've racked up so many, so many energy seeds. It's not even funny, and that's without even really trying to get any more. Especially considering the fact that the gotcha for this can feed you more energy seeds. So, and that's another reason why to grind this too. It can feed you more magic jewels, more gems, more energy seeds if you need them. It can feed you enhancement materials, including ones that you normally have to go to the daily um. The daily rotation of stages, like the SP quests, or the, um, you can also get them from raids, too. So, you can grind out for a lot of extra stuff from this. So, yeah, keep that in mind. Anyways, 
the biggest thing about this is the fact that the SSR at Doan will give you um it will give you pretty much up to 40% more dark attack and then you also get a light resistance. So honestly, if you're trying to keep your dark team a little bit more survivable, this is a one to go for. But not exactly sure on what else to really do for it. And I'm going to pull up these SSR pages later on because we'll go into more detail. And of course the SSR weapon looks like it's a dark sword. And it's got a defender. It says defender on here but it says two small skills of assault. I don't know. I'll have to check into that one. But it does it does indeed seem like it has multiple skills. We've even seen a lot more um, weapons that have that. So when you up the skill level, you're getting a little bit added to both. I've gotten a few light weapons that I've been trying to build up um, that way too. And then, it says there's an SR character called Cupid. I'm not exactly sure what she does, so again, we'll check that out later. I'm opening another tab just for that. Now, here's a big meat and potatoes of this event. Standard stages, you gotta deal with almost a million HP. It's three quarters of a million HP. And this is the only raid where the burst is two turns, so you got to watch out for that one. I mean, this is the only raid where the burst is three turns, the rest is two turns. So you got to watch out for that one when um, you get the stronger ones. But for the most part, it looks like you can either get hit overall under normal um, a normal charge attack, and the raging charge to attack would be um, getting hit twice randomly. So one Kami Hime can get hit with both hits. That's the only time where you really have to worry about taking a lot of damage. But quite frankly, nearly anybody should be able to handle standard. And then, of course, you can always get an extra help if you need it. Now, when you get into Expert, this is where things start getting a little bit trickier. The first of two turns now, from here on out. What's more is the fact that you got to deal with almost 3.5 million HP. And then, the normal charge is, is the two random hits, like before. But, the raging charge not only does an overall attack, but also poisons you. So, you're going to need some status resistance, or just have somebody to heal it out. Me personally, since I'm running in with light team, I have soul. There you go. And then on top of that too, is the fact that I also could still bring in other light characters to help me out with removing status effects too. If I really wanted to. But I'm mainly going to focus on using Arthur for this one and not Mordred, so I don't know. It depends on it depends on how hard it is to debuff this uh, um, this boss. So if I need to switch to Mordred, I can. Anyways, when it comes to Ragnarok, though, 10 million HP to take out. Then on top of that is the fact that it's still two turns for stuff. Now the special action is, is interesting because that random hit twice... Is now a normal move that can just periodically happen. So you can get hit with it a lot of times before she gets her um her charges off. You can get hit with it not at all. So who knows? It can really rack up a lot of damage on a single Kamihime, so start paying attention to that one. But now both the charging attacks are hit everybody in the group. But the normal does poison like like the raging from expert, but the raging charge in Ragnarok does dazzle. Which, translated to English, is the dizzy effect. This means it can start messing with your turns, so you definitely want to get that one off of you. So that's where it really becomes important to try and remove status effects or have some resistance. So I honestly would recommend using Mordred so you can get resistance against it and also have a better chance of putting debuffs on. But again, it's more suited to what you can do. But when they say and break things down here too, it goes into that where um, they never really give any info on standard because it's, it's typically easy even for newer players. So, But when it comes to the standard raids anyway, if you can clear standard on your own, you can probably clear expert um, advent type um, bosses. So you probably can handle the first rank um, accessory quest. But anyways, it really doesn't take that much to get powerful enough to handle standard or the um, or the expert quest when it comes to advent events. So yeah. 
but they break down the expert fight too, where the normal burst hits twice. It's not particularly strong, but it does do a lot of damage on one person, so stay sharp on that one. And the Raging Burst is a whole attack, and it will give you poison damage, but it still does AoE extra damage, so you, so you may or may not want to count, counter that one. And then it also says for Ragnarok, normal and Raging Bow for a whole attack. The special skill lets you um, get hit twice randomly, regardless of the charge intervals. Well, regardless... Regardless of any intervals without charge, so who knows. And the damage from it is somewhat moderate, so you should be paying attention to it. But getting rid of the um, Dazzle and, and all that is where you probably need to um, remove everything. That's, that's where you definitely need to worry about that a lot. And then, they also break down the event gotcha too. Where... And from what I'm seeing, it's like different stuff. There's three SR weapons in here. I guess not four, because maybe the um, maybe the Kamehame you can get from this is a uh, different element, not a different element, but the same one. I'm guessing it's the Love Compact. I'm pretty sure that's the weapon to pull for um her. But you should you should be able to get her just by grinding out enough souls anyway. But they really do break down everything in here, so you get you get magic jewels, you can get energy seeds, you can get various um various upgrade equipment, you can get reinforcement materials. Honestly, if you really do want to try and make the most grinding this stuff out, you can really rack up a ton of magic jewels and gems from this. So that's the biggest reason why you probably should grind this out. The SSR. Honestly, I never really try to aim for SSR from the gotcha. Because the rates of pulling them was quite low, if you want to be honest. There's times that's happened through hundreds, even thousands of tickets and didn't even get both SSR. I only got one of them. And it took a long time for that to even happen, so who knows. But if you really are trying to make the most of your stuff, then you'll likely grind out everything out of the achievement rewards and then still try and pull the gotcha for even more SSR. That can give you more than... More than five Adolans and more than um, four weapons, but I wouldn't recommend it for the Adolans. Maybe the weapons so you can keep stacking the same weapon. I've seen that strategy. If you can get, if you can get multiple copies of SSR, all the way up to um, level 125 from the same raid event, that's very good. But here's, there is a, a list of everything they really got for this um, for this event. The acquisition points are all pretty much raid tickets. And then going down, you you get what it says is love chocolate. I'm guessing that's what you need in order to get into the raids. And then there's other stuff too. But there's um there's bow there's um a bow weapon in here definitely, and they're they're kind of weird. It's like you won't really have too much use for them unless you have specific souls, and they're not even in their original roster from what I can tell. They're they're all like. The ones that got added after the original roster. So, outside of the ones that need Holy Soul Points, I think that means only Achilles and, um, and Herland, which lead up to Hercules, I believe. But, to get to the meat of things, if you really want to get, if you really want to just get the SSR stuff, then you're going to need 200, um, 200 Divine Souls and 100 Devil Souls. If you want to get more than just that stuff, then you're going to also want 3 million raid participation points, and then you're also going to want an additional 50 Divine Souls to get the extra gems and the gacha ticket. If you're a free player, I suggest you try to just grind everything out as much as possible anyways. But yeah, they got the, they got the details on the weapon right here, actually, so I don't have to move any further. But it appears that her summon attack for getting Amphis Bana... It grants dizzy to to all enemies, so honestly, she's kind of like a weaker version of um a weaker version of Echidna, where she doesn't up two elements, but she instead gives you defense against one with, while upping the darkness one, and then they both do um dizzy. So the weapon, however, is a sword, and it's it's going to give you an SR level HP increase and an R level attack increase. 
Now, the thing with these weapons is the fact that while the increases isn't as great as just getting a flat SSR, it still covers two skills in one weapon. So, if you put it that way, it's like this. You can get a maximum of 10 skills with an SSR that just focus on one, or you can get a maximum of 20 when you get multiple. So, honestly, it's up to you. But me personally, I believe you probably should just grind out these type of weapons more often just so you get more benefits for, for one thing. Because some people might not even want the HP, but quite frankly, it's, it's increasing HP and power. And the only difference is the fact that you got 6% less... You got 6% less attack power if you just went for a straight-up assault weapon. Or if you went for a straight-up HP one, 3% less. Just for capping it. But it's still at least 20% to both. So that's why I say try and grind these out. Because, quite frankly, it's more potential. It's more potential because then you can get 10 weapons of this stuff. And regardless of whether it's attack or HP, all of them would get like 20% for each one. So that's like triple HP and attack power across the board at the very least. And then on top of that too, you can also get these grails as well. So you might want to try and grind for a few of them just so you can up your skills better. I've done a video recently about up upgrading skill levels. And quite frankly, with my current gym count, I probably could have just max out my, my light weapons. I'm not sure if I can, but I'll definitely try to go as high as possible. But that's all they really got. They just got random event chat questions. Last thing I want to check out is the... um. Like, if I switch to another tab, I think I'll probably end up getting a, um, something totally different. And I think this Love Compact is what's going to give us the, um, the character. Yeah, it says a Liberate Cupid. It was honestly quite cute. I kind of like the Gothic Alito look. But, um, here's what she's going to do. Now... She's water-based, so she's going to definitely fit for your water team. And what she seems to be is a modified Nikkei, if you really ask me. Like, for the most part, she's got a skill that does damage. It looks like it gives an extra effect, but I'm not exactly sure what it is. I'll have to scroll a little bit further down to find out. Then she gives, like, a middle-level defensive up buff. I think that's somewhere about like 15% maybe to the entire team when you get her to level 65 and then just getting her harem scene which is level 35 you'll, you'll increase everybody's fire defense by a large amount 30% now this is where she actually does have some use because she's got two forms of getting you to a defensive buff so that said she can make your team a little bit tankier if you're water focused so because you typically want to use water against fire enemies anyway. And then she also improves the, um, improves the chance of um, avoiding a status effect. So, yeah. But here's what they say about the abilities. Oh, okay. It deals water damage and also gives a, also gives a dizzy effect. So, yeah. It's only once every nine turns until you upgrade it, though. But it's only the one enemy, so that's the whole thing with it. Now, what they're saying, though, however, is the defensive buff is in a different frame than um, some water characters you may or may not have. Gabriel is one that you sap and, and would probably have if you've done previous um, events. Nikkei's, um, it says magical power release. That's Nikkei Unleashed. Nikkei Unleashed may or may not be in your group. It depends on who you may or may not need to door the miracle ticket or if you just got lucky and pulled her. But this is A-frame. They, they confirm it now. This is A-frame defensive up. So, honestly, Nikkei's defensive up buff in her normal form, which everybody has, about the same level of power as this one but again what makes her stand out is that at the at the cost of the healing she's got in a second defense ability and then can also 
screw with the enemy's turn, so yeah. But at the same time, though, too, there's a long cooldown, a long cooldown um, for the fire resistance. So, to be quite honest, the fire resistance is more situational. So it's like, okay, you're about to get nuked with a really strong attack. Well, 30% less damage off of that, and then the defense. Well, it says your defense goes up by 30%, but I think you really take 15% less damage. I don't know the full numbers, but anyways, you can def you can hit that fire defense, and then also have you a, a normal defense up. Probably even have a stackable with somebody else, because I can do Gabrielle with this one if I get her. And then possibly have Joan or some sort of tank just come in and give another defensive thing. You'll really reduce the damage you can take, so... She's got defensive capability if you need people to help you survive. But she's free, so go after her. Because one thing I will never turn down is a free Kamihime. Now, if I use her or not, it's a different story. But anyways, that's all I have for this event. And, of course, I'm going to do runs of it, too, so expect those at some point. What you may or may not expect is um, if I add my own music to said runs... But I haven't really heard Amphis Bane's um, music. If I did, I don't remember it. So that said, I'll be doing more Kamihime Project when this when this event comes out. Currently, right now, I'm also trying to build up stuff for um, my characters. Like you, I just recently pulled um, a Mono Leash, so I'm hunting down some dark materials because the, today's the day to try and do that. But anyways, that's all I have for now, guys. Take care.